Hi, my name's Lucinda. Welcome to Loving Literature. Do you feel lost when your friends go on and on about the details of the movie you just saw? Or maybe you're in school and you dread going to English class because you have no idea what to say about the story you've just read. If either of those situations sound familiar, this video series could be for you. In this series, I'll give reading tips for textbooks and stories, their structure, elements, and genres, so that you'll have something to add to the discussions. If you love literature, I hope you'll join us too, because sharing ideas about the stories we love can be fun. Hello, this is Lucinda again with Loving Literature, Episode 2. I think it was Albert Einstein who said, knowledge is power. And we go to school so that we can learn things that will help us be successful in life, so that we can find our place in the world and the things that we enjoy. And so hopefully we can use those things that we enjoy in the jobs that we do. So reading is a very fundamental way of learning something, of gaining knowledge. It's not the only way, but it is an important way. So in this episode, I'm going to give you some tips about how to prepare your mind to take in the new information that you're going to be reading in your textbook. I also have a little segment on how to prepare your mind for reading a novel. I hope this information will be helpful for you. So let's begin. One thing that is going to be important when you begin reading is to find a quiet place with no distractions. It's not good to watch TV, talk, or text on your phone, or be playing video games while you're trying to study. Quiet music is okay. In fact, that might help you think better. But in general, you want to concentrate on only one thing, and that's what you're reading. We learn better that way. When you sit down to read your chapter, the textbook writers help you by beginning the chapter with a kind of preview. It's sort of like a preview of your favorite television show, giving you an idea of what the chapter is about. The section headings are kind of like newspaper headlines. That's another clue about information that will be in that section and in the chapter. People who study how we learn have discovered that we remember new information best when it's repeated over and over again in a very short span of time. So another thing to look for in textbooks are inserts like these. Most of them will not be as large as the first one. However, if you read all the insets, it's just a little bit more information to help you remember what you're supposed to be learning. Your chapter may also include pictures, cartoons, and pictures like this one that contain a graphic. There may also be graphic representations of a process or important da data broken down in a visual way, so you have more than one way to remember details of the information. At the end of the chapter, there's more repetition. There may be keywords or key terms listed, Sometimes vocabulary words are at the beginning of the chapter, or sometimes they're in boldface within the chapter, with the definition on the sidebar. If you're in public school, you won't be able to highlight your book or write in the margins like I've done here, but you can take notes. You don't have to write out the entire chapter. Just write down things that you think are important in the chapter, and especially write down any questions that you have because I'll tell you a little secret. Teachers love it when students ask questions. I've been a teacher, and I know when a student asks a question, most likely there are other students who are confused about the same thing. And it also gives me a chance to make sure everyone in the class understands the inf information fully. Teachers wanna do a better job of teaching, so be bold, ask questions in class. At the end of the chapter, there may be a summary, like in this picture. There may also be questions, which the teacher may assign 
to be sure that you've read the chapter. Read through those. It's added repetition. In some textbooks like this one, there may be links for websites where you can do further study. That's always wonderful, especially if you're interested in the subject. I know that reading textbooks will not always be fun, especially if it's not a subject you're interested in. But if you follow the guidelines I've given you, eventually reading those subjects will get easier. You'll be able to pick out the most important information easily. Now I wanted to help you with other types of reading. Most likely you will have to read plays at some point before you graduate from high school. A play is different than reading a novel because it's dialogue. This is the play Our Town by Thornton Wilder. It's very famous, so you may be reading it in school. And a play like this will have a commentary by someone who has studied the play, which is kind of like a preview. And then there will also most likely be a description of the plot. That's another preview. And then there will be a list of characters. Some plays have a short description of the characters here. In our town, the stage directions have the character descriptions. There will also be stage directions to describe what the characters are doing, or sometimes information about the setting that they're in, as you can see in these stage directions. Then, when the characters speak, there is the character name and what they say. I think it's a good idea to read a play out loud. I suggest that because one of the best ways you can understand how the characters are feeling is to hear their lines. It helps you better understand what they mean by what they say and why they do what they do. For a novel, the description slash preview is usually on the back of your book. It's if it's a paperback book. If it's a hardback book, it will most likely be on the inside cover of the paper dust cover. You can also go look up the longer description on a website like Amazon or Barnes and Noble or the iBook store. Also, sometimes authors will include things like maps or a list of unfamiliar vocabulary and how to pronounce the words. There may also be chapter titles, which help you understand what might be happening in the chapter. All of these are ways to help the reader get the most out of the story. Remember, you won't always be reading textbooks either, or novels. You may need to read maps, or a recipe, or directions on how to put something together, or a bus schedule, or any other kinds of reading. Of course, it's most satisfying to read things that you really want to read. So have fun with that. There are so many wonderful things that you can learn from books. Thanks for watching this episode of Loving Literature. My name is Lucinda. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.